Hey programmers, welcome back. Right now, let's keep practicing functions with this B exercise. So what you want to do is pause this video, go down to the link in the description, give the exercise a shot on your own, and then whenever you get stuck, go ahead and replay this video. And so in this exercise set, we just have to write a few different function definitions. And what we want to do is, of course, write each of these functions into their own file. What I'll do to start is create this nice working folder for me. Let's start with this first starts with our problem. So this should be very familiar to a problem we did in the last set, right? And so in this problem, what we want to do is write a function that takes in a string as an argument, and it should return a Boolean indicating whether or not the string starts with an R. We want to return true if it starts with a lowercase r or even an uppercase r. So looking at the third example over here, if we're given a word like slip, it does not start with any r, so we return false. If we have the string roger that, that starts with r, so we return true. So this should be a nice little warm up. Let's go ahead and define this function. So we'll say let starts with r. I'm going to make this a function, it takes in a string. And nothing much to do here. What we just want to do is reference the first index of the string. So we'll say string at index zero. And I'll check if that is equal to r. And this expression by itself checks if the character is literally a lowercase r. What we can also do is or that and check if it's equal to an uppercase r, right? So I'm literally checking, is the first character a lowercase r or an uppercase r? So let's give that a shot. I'll be sure to bring my terminal uh, right next to this starts with r file. So I need to go one level deeper into my b functions. So I'll do that. And then from here, I can run this file using node. I just want to compare my answers here. So here we get true, true, false, false. And that's the solution for starts with r. So let's keep it rolling. And let's work on this parity problem. And so in this function, what I want to do is take in a number as an argument, and I should return a string, right? I should return the string even if the number is even, and I should return the string odd if the number is odd. So looking at the examples, let's say we're passed in five as our number, we should return the string odd, because of course, five is an odd number. If we're passed in the number 32, then we should return the string even because 32 is an even number. And so you could probably guess uh, with this one, we're going to want to leverage the modulo operator. But let's define our function first. So I'll make parity. It's going to be a function that takes in some number, I'll call it num. And here I want to return some string data dependent on whether or not uh, my number is even or odd. So let me just start by expressing, you know, is my number even? So I'll check, hey, if my num, when I mod it by two, if that has no remainder, then it must be an even number. So go ahead and return the string even. There we go. And then otherwise, if the number is not even, then I know this condition is false, so I can write else then what I should do is just return the string odd. So nothing too crazy here. Let's go ahead and give this one a run. So I should get three odds, three evens in that order. And there we have it. Let's go on to the longer function. In this function, I want to accept two strings as arguments this time. And this time return the string that is longer. If the strings have the same length, then I should return the first string. So looking at the first example, I'm given the two strings drum and piranha. My function should return the longer of those two strings, which would be piranha, right? Piranha has a bigger length. And when it comes to this last part of the question, right, when we have to break ties of the length, notice that the last example here says bird and shoe, right? They both have the same length. They both have a length of four. What we want to do is always prefer to return the first string if we have any ties. So I'll keep that in mind. So here's what we'll do. Let's go ahead and define this function. So I'll make my longer function. It's going to take in two strings, I'll call them string one, string two. And what I'll need to do is, of course, compare these strings, and in particular, compare their lengths, right? And so I want to check if the length of string one is bigger than the length of string two, then I should return string one because that's the longer length. So a few things to notice here, notice that in this if statement so far, we're doing a comparison, right? I'm checking greater than, but I'm comparing the lengths of these strings. Bear in mind that just string one refers to a string, but when I take the length of it, I'm getting a number, right? And so here I'm checking if the length of drum is greater than the length of piranha. In other words, if four is greater than seven. And if that statement is not true, then what I should do is return string two, because it must be the longer one. If you look closely at this code, you may notice something that's off. Let's go ahead and run it, and we can always fix the code if something's wrong. So I'll try this. So it looks like I'm getting the first three examples correct, but it looks like I'm getting the last two incorrect. And that has to do with this little part of the problem, right? These are instances where I have ties, right? Disrupt and ability have the same length in the same way bird and shoe have the same length. And it looks like my code in the case of a tie will always return the second string, right? So I wanna fix that. Let's say we really focus in on 
uh, the last example here. We know that string one that length is four, string two that length is also four. So I check is four greater than four? That's false, right? Four is not strictly greater than four. So I return string two. Instead, I want to return string one. So what I'll do is if string one dot length is greater than or equal to, then I should still return string one, right? So even if it's equal to, I prefer to return the first. So let's run all of these examples now. And there we have our longer function. Let's move on to this one or none problem. And in this function, what I want to do is take in two booleans and return true if exactly one of the arguments is true. And if both of the arguments are true, then I should still return false. Looking at the first example, I'm given false, false, so I should return false. Looking at the second example, I'm given true, false, so I should return true, right? Because exactly one of the arguments is true. Looking at the third example, I'm given false, true. Again, exactly one of the arguments is true, so I return true. If I have a scenario where both arguments are true, like true, true, then I should return false, right? So the key pattern here is I only want to return true if one of my arguments are true, right? So I'll write the code here. I'll have my function take in two arguments. I'll call them value one and value two. Let's think about how we want to solve this one. So it's definitely the case I want to check a condition. In particular, I want to check if only one of my arguments is true. So here's what I'll do. I'll use an if statement. And let me just start by checking or, right? So I'm gonna check val1 or val2. So bear in mind that val1 and val2 are themselves Booleans, so I can totally or them together. And if you recall the or operator, it will return true if at least one of the sides satisfy, right? If at least one of my values is true. But you probably also remember that if both things are true, it still returns true. So this actually isn't exactly what I'll want here. So I'll return true in this case, then here I'll return false. So we'll get a little wrong answer here, but we can always fix it. So I get the first one correct, I get the second and third one also correct, but the last one fails, right? So at this point, I really just wanna correct this last example. And so what I want to say is I don't want to return true if both of my inputs are true. And so what I can do is take this condition and kind of extend it so I'm going to put in parentheses and we'll explain why in a little bit. And I need to end that. And I wanna say, and not both of these. So I'll say not val one and val two. So there's a little bit of logic to this. Let's kind of interpret it. And how should we read this code? And so here I'm checking if either val one or val two and not both of them at the same time. Right, remember that or kind of refers to like either. And if I say and not both, then I'm only gonna get a totally true statement when only one of them is true. So let's try this. And there we have it. So this is a fairly common pattern whenever you want to establish logic that says you want either thing, but not both things at the same time. Like we also said earlier, you may notice that I need to wrap up uh, some of these expressions in parentheses because of the order of operations, right? So technically, and has a higher precedence than or. So I want this or to happen first, I'm going to need to wrap it in its own set of parens. So let's keep going and let's work on this ends in ly problem. So in this function, what I wanna do is take in a string as an argument and return a Boolean indicating whether or not the string ends in the substring ly. So if I'm given the string pretty, I should return false because it does not end in ly. If I'm given the string timidly, I should return true because it does end in ly. So let's go ahead and define this function. And of course I'll take in my string. And to solve this one, I want to check if the string ends in ly, which is really just saying that its second to last character is l, and its very last character is y. So this one isn't too hard to check. What I could do, uh, maybe I'll create some variables. So I'll say let second last. So this refers to the second to last character in the string, which I know will be string of string dot length minus two, right? Recall that minus one refers to the last, so minus two is the second to last. Speaking of the last, I'll grab it over here. You've seen this pattern a few times. And then from here, I'll just go ahead and check a nice Boolean expression. So what I should say is maybe just return my second last character should equal an L and my last character should equal a Y, right? And it's really important that I do an and here because both of these clauses must be satisfied, right? So let's try this. And then we have a nice solution for ends in ly. And do be aware of the fact that you need to use and here, right? So let's say you mistakenly wrote or, then what you're doing here is really just checking if either your second last character is L or your last character is Y. So if I tried this code, 
That means I would fail on like the first example even because only this condition is true, but because I'm ordering things together, the entire return value would evaluate to true. So you definitely want both things. So be sure to use and over here. So this is the way I kind of expected you to solve this one, but to kind of level up as a programmer, we can also leverage some built-in methods. So definitely understand this pattern because it's really important that you can like build these solutions with what you know, but just for fun, there's also a built-in method called ends with, right? So it's a really cool method. So what I can literally do is just say string dot ends with and then literally ly. And so ends with is a built-in method I can use on strings and it does exactly what you expect. So that's a nice built-in way to actually solve this one. Make sure it doesn't break. Let's move on to this funny sound problem. So in this one, what I want to do is take in two strings as arguments and I should return a new string containing the first three characters of both of my inputs concatenated together. And they give us a nice assumption here. We can assume that both arguments are at least three characters long. So for example, if my function takes in tiger and spoon, I should return Tigspo, really just taking the first three characters of each string, combining them together. Likewise for the other examples over here. So let's define this function. I'll take in my two strings, string one, string two. And let's think about how I can grab the first three characters of my input strings respectively. Well, I'm really just asking you to take a slice of these strings. So just recall the syntax for slicing. What I can say is from my first input string, slice from the very beginning all the way up to, and I want to actually include this third character here. So remember how the slice method works. The kind of tedious bit is that when you specify an end index, it's gonna be exclusive. So if I write this expression, what I'm saying is, give me the character starting at index zero up to but not including character at index three. So that will give me just literally zero, one, two, the first three characters. And so maybe just to do a little quick check, let's go ahead and console.log what this single slice gives back. So I'll run this. And notice I see the first three characters of every string one. I notice that the undefined over here is coming from these console.logs because right now my funny sound function doesn't return anything, right? Earlier we said that if a function doesn't return by default, it returns undefined. But at least I verified that this pattern is exactly what I need. So to actually wrap this one up, what I can just do is return the first three characters of string one added to the first three characters of string two. So it's really uh, the same pattern twice over. Nice, and there we have a nice solution for this. Let's move on to this string size problem. And so this problem, what I wanna do is take in a string as an argument and return different strings based on the length of it, right? And so if my string is shorter than five characters, I should return small. If my string has exactly five characters, I return medium. And if it's longer than five characters, I return large. And you probably foresee in this one, I'm gonna use some nice conditionals. So let's work on this. I'll take in some input string and let's start to check the length, right? So I really just want uh, some type of conditional for each of these cases. So let me start by checking, hey, if my string is shorter than five characters, so if string.length is less than five, then I'll do some code. And I know I have another scenario where I need to check else if my string is bigger than five characters. And what I'll do is end this chain by saying else. And so, my initial conditional is checking if it's less than five, then I'm checking if it's greater than five. If none of those are true, then it must be the case that it's equal to five. So I can already see that this else is going to handle the scenario where I return medium, right? Because it's exactly five characters. So I'll do that here. Then of course, this initial one should have been return small. And the second one should have been return large. So let's give this a test. It should get small, small, medium, medium, and large, large. All right, so let's step through the very last one here. And so in this problem, what I wanna do is take in two strings and return a new string containing the first three characters of my first string and the last two characters of my second string. So if I look at the first example, I'm given very and kindly. So I grab the VER from my first string and I grab the last two characters LY from my second string. So this problem is similar in shape to the funny sound problem, except this time I wanna grab different parts of my input strings. So let's start tacking this one. And you guessed it, I wanna use some slices. So I already know how to grab the first three characters of string one, right? That's very easy. What I can just say is string one dot slice from zero up to three. And then from there, I wanna grab the last two characters of my second string. 
So what I should do is string two dot slice. And hopefully you remember uh, the syntax I can use to reference like the end of my string uh, using slice, you can actually pass in a negative index and that will reference characters starting from the end. So for example, if I did negative two, this would begin slicing at my second to last index, which is L and go all the way to the end, right? So this will actually give me the LY. Maybe just looking at that pattern isolation, uh, what I'm saying is if I did, let's say A, B, C, D, E, F dot slice, and I pass in some negative number like negative three, this would take my starting index as the third to last and go all the way through the end. So let's try this. And I'm just using a similar pattern for this solution over here. So let's try our code now. And that's our solution for wacky word. So do remember that when we have slice, it's always the case that if you only pass in one argument, that's gonna be taken as a start, and it's gonna begin at that position and go all the way through the end, right? So this code says start at the second to last character and just go all the way to the end because I didn't give uh, any second argument over here. All right, so that wraps up our walkthrough for the B functions exercise. What you wanna do is definitely make sure you have all of these problems down pat. Make sure you can solve them on your own, right? Use the walkthrough to get to that level of understanding. But once you can solve these totally on your own, then you have my lesson to go on to the C exercise for this, which will turn up the difficulty a little bit.